So let's move on from nature. Of course, uh, it was interesting to see at Maxi archive that letter with Otto Frey, which actually was also commented by Professor Olmo, and was uh, somehow surprising that he was uh, exchanging uh, letters with Otto and with uh, photographs of this uh, algae and for the symmetry, of course, for this uh, uh, natural way of, uh, of building a, a structure according to natural laws. So, another uh, instance of this is uh, this paper uh, from uh, uh, Thomas Leslie. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention him. Uh, sorry about that, but this is maybe easier. I saw it. Um, and uh, this was basically the reliance on simple algorithm. What we found was that in the Palazzetto, um, basically, uh, design of the ribs, uh, these are basically equiangular spiral, spiral. So there is a logarithmic uh, spiral that goes beyond it. And the idea here was not to say that he was copying nature. It was only to say that he was able to uh, find a solution from a geometric point of view, which seemed to, to the visitor or to the man who is living there, that is natural. So there, would be, there wouldn't be any other uh, solution. That's, that's the impression he gave. And uh, it comes, of course, from this uh, relationship with this uh, natural law. Of course, you don't find that any Fibonacci law or any fancy stuff in his geometry. Because everything was simple. But the idea is that it has to be readable in some sense. Um, so, trying to uh, step on geometry, uh, actually the architecture, the structural architecture, maybe structure can be also omitted, of course has to encompass all these instances. Of course there are many others, I try to summarize uh, the attempt is just to make a synthesis out of uh, the many uh, ingredients. Now, of course, here are all the uh, aspects he was always trying to focus on. Uh, so, aesthetics, functionality, construction efficiency, structural performance. In any computer, I change the N, the E, they go all, all, all over the place, so <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, but, uh, again, here the key point seems to be geometry. Uh, geometry, why? Because I think at, at his, in his period, geometry was, uh, of course, the, the Euclidean geometry was the, the perfect tool to blend the ideal mathematical rigor and the, uh, maybe the practical aspects of building. And so, uh, actually, he was uh, somehow able to join the two things. So that is the dirty of the uh, construction site and the quadric equation, as I will show you later on. Um, of course, to, to enter into the geometry, the geometrical aspect, he has poor tools, of course. I mean, the tools that uh, everybody had at this time, those time, which are basically bi-dimensional drawings. So, even when he was facing complicated spatial structure, he had to face this Somehow, uh, somehow these poor tools. So, whenever he was devising a, a section that was changing, a variable section, he has to, of course, to rely on cross sections. And so, it's not like we are doing today that we can slice a three-dimensional shape and have all the sections that we have. This is, of course, like this. But also, when we go to building. You know, he was, of course, uh, uh, he devised many ways of, uh, for prefabricating. Actually, he introduced the prefabrication, so modularity for him was an issue. And in spite of that, he was able to uh, solve structural problems that were three-dimensional complex, but relying only on two-dimensional, uh, uh, somehow, tools. And uh, that's why he it's somehow, to me at least, as a maybe 2010, 40 years old, 44, uh, something strange that a structural engineer was so uh, somehow uh, uh, give, giving a lot of attention to these perspectives. 
So he was always trying to make a 3D view, so a vision of the three-dimensional aspect of his structure, so the outcome, the final outcome. Uh, I don't think this is really uh, usual. So the architectural space, which is the three-dimensional space, was one of his uh, main uh, concern. And uh, so let's see, for instance, uh, a couple of examples. So now on, from the geometric and the structural computational point of view, I will just mention two uh, examples. These are not intended to be, uh, I mean, that's why I didn't mention even at the beginning all the, all the structures that he designed. It would be too long, uh, many of them are very famous, so I'm just trying to focus on the principle. So that's why I, try, I just took as an example one of the first of his uh, main uh, design, the one that was uh, so nicely introduced by uh, Alessandro Montoni from a historical point of view. And this is uh, actually the second series of Hangers. And uh, of course, in this case, um, there were a lot of announcements with respect to the previous one, just to testify his uh, research attitude. Uh, actually, the picture that uh, Alexander Montoya showed before was referring to the Oviedo Angara. So, what changed from that project to this one uh, is important because testifies is. As I was saying, is his need to improve what he was doing. In that case, he noticed that the asymmetry of the supports was giving a problem. He didn't give any uh, somehow joint expansion, so thermal stresses uh, made the, somehow the roof tiles to fail. And uh, moreover, he couldn't stand the loss of so much wood for the woodwork, food, uh, woodwork. So, somehow, in that case, since it was cast in place, a vault, um, of course, he, he tried with the second series to uh, introduce prefabrication in order to gain from this respect. So, in this case, uh, the symmetry was uh, conser conserved by putting just six supports at the edges, and the, main, the structure was made lighter, with these uh, arch that are trusses and just leaving uh, the main ones as uh, uh, as full actually they were also but full uh, not truss beams and also um, uh, what he did was that by pouring the joints in place uh, he was of course uh, replacing the continuity of the structure so again these structures as uh, of course the, the cross section is the shape of a catenary, so it was important to have a beam here because he was of course aware of the fact that the mechanical behavior of this vault is such that the directrix is what rule. So in this case, a, a vaulted uh, shell which has a catenary means that you have only basically arch behavior, uh, so basically to, uh, you also you only have the member the membrane stresses uh, which are along this direction. You don't have anyone along the longitudinal direction. That's why he devised this 45 degrees net, of course, to make the structure collaborate in the, in the 3D sense. And also, uh, these uh, elements here are prone to be uh, somehow subjected to flexural um, forces and bending moments. And uh, so...